Hello, everybody. It looks like folks are logging on. So we'll just take a couple of minutes to let people log on and then we'll get started with the webinar. Looks like more people are still logging on. So we'll just take a minute to let everybody get connected so we can start. Maybe we'll just wait half a, half a minute here before we get started, because it looks like people may still be logging on. Maybe we'll go ahead and get started now. I'm Carl Silverstein, Executive Director of Southern Appalachian Highlands Conservancy. I'm so proud uh, to be able to introduce Hani Muter and Hannah Peterman to you today, who will be telling us a little bit about an exciting new project uh, not far from, from Asheville and just outside Canton, a new public park that we're involved in helping create at Chestnut Mountain. Um, they will, uh, Hani and Hannah will give a presentation and then at the end of, of that we will take questions. So if there's things you're wondering about the new park project, um, if you type your question into the chat, then we will get to that at the end of their presentation. So, um, so happy that all of you are able to join us. We're really thrilled to be able to do these webinars online so that we can continue to tell you about exciting work that SHC is doing during the pandemic. And uh, this is the first of a series, we hope, where we will be able to kind of keep you abreast of exciting con conservation work that we're doing. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to SHC's Conservation Director, Hani Muter, to tell us more about the Chestnut Mountain Park. Thanks, Carl, and, and thank you everyone for joining today. So we're really excited to share with you that last month, Southern Appalachian Highlands Conservancy permanently protected 448 acres that you're seeing here on your screen at Chestnut Mountain, which is an exciting new project in Haywood County. So there is a national trend with land trusts to try to do more projects that not just both protect special places important for conservation, but also that really are an asset to the community through innovative partnerships. And SHC has been working on innovative community partnerships and projects since the 1960s, when we started protecting land for public enjoyment on the highlands of Rhone for the Appalachian Trail. This Chestnut Mountain project is another new example of conservation and conservation-based recreation working together within a community for the benefit of animals, plants, water, and people. And we're just gonna scroll through some slides so you all can see what this property looks like. So for a trail map today, we're going to hear a bit about the story about how this property's permanent protection happened. We'll also hear about what qualities made us and funders interested in protecting this property specifically. Finally, at the end, we'll get into next steps as this property is slated for a future public park. 
More details and public input on initial conceptual plans for the public park will be shown next week during a Zoom public presentation and forum held by the town of Canton. And we'll give you more details on that at the end. But today we'll give you a brief sneak peek and explain how this property's conservation values will be protected while public rec recreation is happening on the property. So where is this property? So located a mile east of Canton, between Canton and Asheville on Highway 1923 and minutes away from Interstate 40, this property is an ideal location for both conservation and recreation. We first noticed this track because it was on the market. And one day, driving along Highway 23, when I was coming back to Asheville from my mom's house, in Bethel, the for sale sign caught my eye. At 448 acres, we knew this property for sale was one of the largest privately owned tracts left in Haywood County. It especially caught our eye because it sits on an important wildlife corridor. Indeed, as any local or hunter will tell you, wildlife signs are on this property are abundant. Animals like to move on ridgelines, and a ridgeline runs all the way from Mount Pisgah, here's Mount Pisgah, this ridgeline runs all the way north from Mount Pisgah up along the county line and all the way up to Sandy Mush and eventually along Moore County line and up into Madison up to Max Pat. So we look at it as our job to help protect these large anchor pieces in the landscape for wildlife movement when they are there are willing buyers. In fact, so this Pink is showing the, the important wildlife corridor. And in fact, the new future Pisgah View State Park will also be a large new anchor on this corridor, a corridor receiving a lot of pressure from Asheville expansion and growth. So we're looking the opposite way now, and Mount Pisgah is up here, and then the county line runs all along this ridge line you can see in Google Earth with the future of Pisgah View State Park here on one side in Buncombe County, and on this side in Haywood County, the Chestnut Mountain Tract. So how was this important wildlife corridor determined? How did we know that this ridgeline was significant for wildlife move movements? In a few minutes, Hannah Peterman will discuss the science that went into identifying this ridgeline area conducted by National Nonprofit Wildlands Network, which studies how wildlife <clears throat> Furthermore, when evaluating this tract to see if we were interested in purchasing it, we also saw the property uh, sits directly on the main conceptual Hellbender Greenway path connecting municipalities in the Asheville metropolitan region. So it sits right here. This is the conceptual Hellbender regional plan to try to connect all of these different municipalities in the area. So could this tract be an anchor destination for this planned greenway, a place for future greenway users to explore and enjoy a forested respite? Additionally, Haywood County has a lot of protected land. It has Shiny Rock, it has the Blue Ridge Parkway, Water Rock Knob, but most of it is at the edges of the county. And then people generally have to take a good drive from population centers to get to these spots. At one mile from Canton town limits, could this be an accessible nearby place for residents of Haywood and Buncombe to easily step into the woods for an after work walk or a nearby place to bring kids and school groups that, to enjoy and learn about nature? SHC began discussions with the town and, of Canton and Haywood County soon after we learned the property was on the market to ask if this property and potentially making it available for trails and conservation based public recreation would be welcomed and would it be needed by the community. And also if SHC raised the funds to purchase the property, would the town and county then want to eventually own and management and manage it? We were met with an enthusiastic yes about the project and opportunity and the town and county have, have been actively involved in partnering ever since for the last year and a half or two years. So we also looked at other conservation values of what makes this property significant. 
we looked, this property boasts over nine miles of stream. You can see it has a section of Hominy Creek, which eventually flows into Buncombe County. It, it has these tributaries that flow into Hominy and some tributaries that flow into Dutch Cove Creek. And here's Hominy Creek. And then here are some of the tributaries that are found on the property. After we determined that this property was highly desired for conservation and strategically significant for a combination of conservation and community recreation, we approached the seller with an offer. But the proximity to I-40, the town of Canton, and 20 minutes away from Asheville, the same reasons we were looking at it, at it as a recreation potential, also made the pop property popular for other commercial ideas and offers. It turns out that at the same time, we were bidding against a company planning rock extraction and rock mining on the property, which would have been a much different outcome for this land and the community. The sellers, one of which whose family had originally owned the land for decades, had been through a lot of ideas and proposals for the property over the last 20 years. And this property has had a significantly uh, high profile past. I remember when I was in high school at nearby Pisgah in the 1990s, the property was slated to be a 9,300 seat grandstand motorsports speedway, an expo center, somewhat as a replacement for the void that had been left by the recently, recent closing of the Asheville Motor Speedway, which is now the velodrome at Carrier Park. Here's an old picture of that speedway that closed. Some lower portions of the property were graded and cleared for the future grandstand speedway, but largely due to funding and other factors, that project never materialized and no speedway was ever built. Then for a while, there was an idea for a resort type development with indoor ski slopes. Also due to funding, that project never took off. Nibbles of different ideas for the property occurred over the years, but in 2018, the sellers, Canton Motorsports LLC, were ready to sell and decided that they wanted to sell for conservation. Our offer, that gets me emotional. <laughs> Our offer was below appraised value for the property, but because the sellers were supportive of conserving the property and seeing it used by the community, They decided to donate several hundred thousand dollars of property value. It's been a, a long dream for a lot of different people, so I'm really excited to see it happen. So where did the funding come from to purchase the property? It was a grant made possible by a generous gift. Or it was made possible by a generous gift from Brad and Shelley Standback and also a $1.2 million grant from the North Carolina Clean Water Management Trust Fund. So what is the Clean Water Management Trust Fund? In North Carolina, we're lucky to have several state trust funds that support conservation. This trust fund was established by the General Assembly in 1996 as a non-regulatory organization with a focus on protecting the state's land and water resources and awarding grants to do so. And funding also came from the Department of Justice and their Environmental Han Enhancement Grant Program. So this agreement money allocated by Smithfield Food. So, so the DOJ in 2000 brought lawsuit to Smithfield Foods for the hog damage uh, that, that, that Smithfield had done to the state's water. And as a settlement and agreement out of that, now Smithfield's paid $2 million, pays $2 million per year in environmental projects across the state. And this project was one of those awarded. Also, thank you to the Community Foundation of Western North Carolina's Pigeon River Fund. And here are the partners of the town and the county together in Raleigh advocating for some of these funds, as well as here's our Attorney General Josh Stein awarding our grant for the project. Finally, we're still working to raise for, uh, 
funds for final project costs. Because the property was on the market and the project was extremely timely with competitive bids, SHC took out a loan with the conservation fund to close before all projects were completed, or before all project funds were completed. We're working for the remainder of the year to close that gap before we transfer the property to the town for a public park. And speaking of public park, we'll discuss those next steps soon, but first Hannah Peterman, our AmeriCorps associate here at SHC who has traipsed all over this property with me, will talk about the interesting science behind what the heck is a significant wildlife corridor anyway, and how does it relate to climate change? Take it away, Hannah. Thanks, Hani. So in all of our traipsing, we noticed that the Chestnut Mountain property is teeming with wildlife. As you can see here, in just a single morning on the property, you can spot a wide variety of animals. And this is due to the diverse habitats that make up the property and in turn support diverse wildlife. Next slide, please. So zooming out a little bit, um, the Chestnut Mountain property's location makes it very important for wildlife. As Hani mentioned earlier, the property, which is marked, map, whoa, marked on this map, excuse me, um, by that blue star, lies within a high priority wildlife corridor identi identified by the Wildlands Network. The Wildlands Network wanted to figure out how wildlife moves now and how it will continue to move in the future. They created this map by looking at how black bears, box turtles, timber rattlesnakes, and several other terrestrial mammals and reptiles move, along with areas of land with high flow of species, meaning landscapes that facilitate a lot of wildlife movement, along with areas of importance to overall habitat network. And they also included information about anthropogenic factors, like traffic patterns and land cover, to draw all of these corridors. So as you can see, Chestnut Mountain lies in a wildlife corridor that provides the only northward path between Mount Pisgah through Sandy Mush up to Max Patch on the AT, which makes it essential for wildlife mobility in this area. This corridor also bisects this area on either side in dark gray um, with high development pressure from Asheville to the east and Canton to the west. Next slide. So zooming in again, we can see that the property is situated adjacent to the I-40 and US 1920, or Highway 1923 corridors and right between these two population centers of Canton and Asheville. And so working with willing landowners to conserve these large anchor properties like Chestnut Mountain is hugely important for the protection of this movement pathway for wildlife. Next slide. And not only does the property facilitate wildlife mobility, but it also hosts a wide variety of habitat types, which we call a habitat mosaic. So within the property boundaries, you can find riparian habitat, coves, hardwood forests of varying ages, ridges, open areas, and forest edges. And this diversity of habitat types comes partly from the property's history of disturbance. Like Hani said earlier, um, when it was slated to become a motor speedway, a large portion of the mid-elevation land was graded. So today it actually provides important pine forest and early successional habitat, which is really important for birds and a lot of other wildlife. In addition, the diverse types of rock which underlie the property, which are known as the geological setting, yield diverse soil types, which in turn determine the natural community and habitat types that can develop on the surface. And this variety of habitat niches is especially important for wildlife in the face of climate change. Both large connected areas of habitat as well as diversity of habitat type will be essential for allowing the adaptation of wildlife as the climate changes and animals must move into new niches to survive. And this phenomenon is known as climate resiliency. Next slide. So this is a really awesome, powerful graphic which was created by the University of Washington and the Nature Conservancy, and it demonstrates how wildlife is expected to move or flow across the landscape at a continental scale. And so you can see where the mouse pointer might be. <laughs> there you go. Um, but in our region, the Southern Appalachians, um, 
it will be a high, it will be essential for facilitating the movement of a high volume of wildlife, both northward and to higher elevations. And so the conservation of land within this region, especially land um, within these high priority wildlife corridors determined by Wildlands Network, um, and like the one, like the one in which Chestnut Mountain is located, um, are key in creating a future that can sustain wildlife and the habitats they depend on. And so now Hani is going to tell us a little bit more about what happens next in Chestnut Mountain's conservation story. Hani, you're muted still. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Anna. So from here, the next steps will be to place permanent conservation easements on the property, restricting the property from most all development except for recreational features that work with conservation. These permanently restricted conservation easements will be held by the state's Clean Water Management Trust Fund and by Southern Appalachian Highlands Conservancy. SHC will also be responsible for annually monitoring these property, this property after it is transferred to the town. So what are recreational features that work with conservation? What does that mean? So the state has thought a lot about this. We've thought a lot about this and there are template conservation easements that dictate that kind of use. And so features that work with conservation, we're talking about hiking, biking, if trails are designed sustainably for both of those uses, picnicking, outdoor education, limited camping, and other such relatively passive activities and some support structures for those activities, bathrooms, picnic pavilion, and such. There won't be recreational motorized use allowed on this property by the public. Recreational uses that work with conservation is also about the design. It's about placing recreational features with a wide buffer from any waterway. It's also about identifying where significant conservation values are, where significant species are. And these are the three significant natural heritage species that have been identified on the property so far. We've got a significant grasshopper, um, with the Cherokee Monopolis grasshopper, they, we, our uh, Equinox Owen Carson caught a photo of the mating, and then as the white bear sedge, and then the upland bladder fern. So some of these might be very abundant on the property, but they're significant um, statewide as well. And part of the design is finding out where significant species are so you can concentrate recreation places, maybe avoiding these space spaces or to pr be protective of these. And it's also about placing most recreational features uh, about identifying their slope and design of trails to minimize sediment and runoff. There are a lot of specifications that you can do to minimize water runoff in trails. Trails, the, the, the most, the hardest thing about trails is if you don't account for the water and runoff. But luckily there's a, a professional trail designer on the property and Equinox Environmental has been also been hired to uh, help with the master planning and to think about these features. Finally, it's about maybe concentrating certain uses in certain areas of the property. As we mentioned before, part of the property was previously disturbed when it was slated to be a grandstand speedway and part of the area was graded. So we're looking at the property and seeing if we can concentrate most activity around the lower areas and also in areas that were recently logged. This is maybe where biking could be potential, uh, to a potential for biking to be, while leaving another good section of the property, primarily as is with some limited hiking trails. The town of Canton and Haywood County have been leading the effort to assess community needs and input for the future public park to work on a master plan for the conservation-based recreational features. 
Many of you have already submitted input to the initial survey on desired features of the property. Thank you. Over 4,000 responses were received pointing to both the, both the local community input and the potential that this property can be used for outdoor recreation-based economic development, which nearby towns such as Brevard have taken advantage of. This could help diversify Canton's primarily industrial-based economy, as well as be an asset for locals. All partners involved are carefully mindful that this property should work for local residents and families, a place for hopefully all members of the family to enjoy, whether someone to come sit along the creek and someone to hike, someone to, some might want to bike and others might want to just walk on flat accessible trails. As well, uh, we also want things to work out for, sorry? So overall, we want uh, things to work out for out of town users and locals all at the same time. And if you didn't have a chance to chime in on the initial survey or want to learn more and see some maps and photo ideas of what is being considered for the property, tune in to the town's public forum on Zoom next Wednesday, July 29th at 7 p.m. And to visit the link for that, you visit cantonnc.com, so the town of Canton's website for all the link on that information, July 29th at 7 p.m. In closing, the pressure from Asheville growth is mounting and moving westward. Our job is to try to predict and secure places in these areas of high development pressure for future generations to enjoy and wildlife to live on. We can work now to protect the, these large pieces while they are still intact and their price is relatively low to secure spots for people to enjoy and animals to move. Or we can wait to try to piece together more fragmented tracks when in 10 or 20 years, maybe we feel that development pressure even more acutely, but land prices are higher and the larger tracks are gone and the need, and need to be pieced together. This is happening in the Triangle area and in Charlotte, where they are realizing they need to protect more spaces for parks and to protect natural resources close to population centers but the land is already pretty fragmented and expensive. It's taking a lot of resources and creativity to piece together parcels for conservation there. We're grateful that so many partners wanted to make the former, we're, we're grateful that so many partners wanted to make this pro property and project happen when the opportunity was here. Thank you to all the funders and partners who have made it happen, to you, to SHC members, donors who have all contributed, specifically to this project or for conservation in general, or just to support and who are here to learn. Thank you, and we hope we get to, you, hope we get to enjoy this property with you in the future. Thank you so much, Hani and Hannah, for your excellent presentations and uh, for everybody who's signed on and has been watching the webinar. We're so grateful for your interest in what we're doing and your interest in this property and visiting the property. And um, there have been a lot of great questions asked. Um, I've tried to type a few answers to some of those in and, um, and just to uh, maybe focus on a couple that haven't been answered yet. Uh, one question is a, a, an estimate of when bike trails might be Completed on the property when people might be able to visit as a public place. I, that, that question has gotten asked lots of times. Great. So thanks, thanks for your interest in that. And so our next steps are to place conservation easements on the property and to finalize funding for, for our, we still have almost $300,000 to raise, not quite that. We've, we've gotten some really nice gifts recently on this. So we need to do that before we can put the conservation easements on and transfer the property to, to the town. We're hoping we can do that as soon as possible and uh, the initial plan was this year, but it will, it will be determined based on those two things. And so uh, the town and Equinox and is in the county 
are starting in on trail, initial trail plans based on some of that public input. And that does include biking um, trail plans and a lot of thought has already gone into that. And they're planning on submitting some grants for some biking and hiking trails here soon. So nothing before any time next year, but I hesitate to put any sort of timeline on it. But I think the hope is that sometime in 2021, we'll be able to um, make some progress. Great, thanks. Um, another question is, um, who would be building trails at the park? And I don't know if we can kind of answer that generally, if not specifically. Yeah, so the neat thing about this project is that it's already generated a lot of enthusiasm and input from different community members in the, in the hiking and biking communities. Uh, Sorba has been involved, uh, which is a biking, local biking group, as well as some local biking leaders and have offered, I think, some resources to help maintain and do some of the building um, themselves, which is great. I think that's an aspect of community recreation re working really well together, uh, but they, the town has hired an independent trail planner who is very adept at they, this is what they do elevated trail design is that they design and, and also build trails so i'm not sure if they will be the actual ones contracted to build the trails um, but they are the ones designing them right now so it'll probably be a combination of professional and I'm, I'm thinking professional and volunteer use and that ultimately would be best answered by the town. And that's a great question for next week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, lots more questions are flowing in and I see that we've sort of come to the end of the time period. Maybe we could try answering one or two more maybe and then I realize people probably have things they need to go do. Um, one person has asked about uh, access for public parking, where that's likely to be. Um, I'm not sure whether the question is really somebody interested in parking there now and visiting it, and we might want to remind people that doesn't work so well, but where parking will be, I guess. Yeah, that's, that's all part of the master plan, and I think the hope is that parking would be very close to Highway 1923, but again, that, that public parking won't happen until the property is transferred to the town and it's officially open, but I'm we're hoping that it's easily accessible from the road. <laughs> um, we have had a question about what, what if any NEPA studies might be required for a development like this. And um, I don't know if we can answer that one briefly. Uh, yeah, so NEPA is usually the process for federal lands if development is happening. This is, you know, the same, I think, intent is that conservation is the main goal here and we want to be protective of the natural resources in any design. And the NEPA process is generally for federal lands and here I think we're trying to achieve some of those same objectives by getting a natural heritage inventory already done on the property that identified some of those species you saw, as well as um, Equinox Environmental is a local firm um, that's hired by a lot of different uh, groups and municipalities in the area focusing on conservation-based and low impact design. So thinking about bioswales and parking and, and all those best management features to, you know, this is a place to showcase and educate people about that. So, um, yeah, I don't think there'll be a formal NEPA process, but I think the goals of trying to evaluate impacts and significant areas that NEPA tries to get at, um, some of that will try to capture um, in our own way. Great. Um... We have gotten a couple of questions asking about whether the property might be open for road biking. And um, I thought that you might want to mention the Hellbender Trail again, um, but that the park is really going to be more, I think, for less road biking and probably more mountain biking. But. Yeah, I think um, 
So the, the, uh, that's a perfect idea is that the idea is that the Hellbender Regional Trail, which the initial phase of that I think has been delayed, but still in, um, but still in the design process and already designed out to connect to do some of that initial work along Highway 1923. It's a DO, DOT project that initially was 2023, but I'm not sure if it's gotten pushed out. But that would be a bike lane and a height and walking lane from the town of Canton, at least to this park. But the idea is that it would keep continuing out to uh, Asheville uh, eventually. That's the hope and dream. So that's where more road biking would go, but there's not going to be really paved features for, for that kind of road biking on the property, um, except for an ADA accessible, potentially walking um, and ADA accessible trail might be paved on the property to allow accessibility um, of, of different kind of mobilities. Thanks, Hani. Well, I want to thank Hani and Hannah one more time for uh, a great presentation and for uh, their hard work on this project. Um, I want to thank everybody who's still online and everybody who's uh, joined us for this presentation. We are recording it and uh, plan to make it available on our social media. So if you uh, are interested in sharing it with friends, that would be a wonderful thing, maybe who weren't able to log in today and uh, thanks for all your interest in SHC and we have a series of more of these lunch and learns on the way to help keep everybody posted. Um, we have uh, also the community forum that um, we're showing you one more time on July 29th if you're interested in the park and uh, having a say in, in how that looks we, we encourage you to to join us for that. Any final thoughts? Thank you, everybody. If not, we want to say thanks and goodbye, and, and please join us next time as well. Thanks so much.